Is this the perfect bed slinger? Let's take a look at the brand new Bamboo Lab A1 3D printer as well as some of the things that I've 3D printed with it and I'll give you some of my initial thoughts of working with this machine over the past week or so and why I think this just might be the perfect bed slinger. And if you don't know what a bed slinger is, it's a style of 3D printer that has a bed that slings forward and backwards while it's 3D printing in motion and it's a very popular style of 3D printer over the past God knows how many years now and Bamboo Lab just has released today their new A1 3D printer, which is the bigger iteration of their initially released earlier this year, bed slinger, the A1 Mini. Now this isn't going to be a full on review of this machine because I've only had like a week and a half, two weeks to 3D print with this. I've technically had it longer, but I've just been busy with other projects. I, I will definitely be doing a full on dedicated review of this here as I continue to work with it, probably in a month or two. For now, I've gotten some good experience while working with this and I have to say, it really is a fantastic bed slinger. It's not perfect, but it's pretty dang close. And just a few months ago, Bamboo Lab released the A1 Mini, which is the smaller variation of the A1. Now, when this was initially announced and sent to me to show off to you guys, that was my very first thought is, all right, this is the A1 Mini, but what about the standard A1? Or are we gonna get an A1 Max? I would be uh, very excited to see a larger iteration of this. I think that's Mostly what the community that is a fan of these 3D printers is asking for is a larger 3D printer, preferably a Core XY, which is what Bamboo Lab is known for. Also, this 256 build volume that we're seeing on the A1 is identical to the P1P, the P1S, and the X1 Carbon series of machines that they're known for and have gained a ton of popularity for, with not only being able to print fast, but also have really quality, solid looking prints, as well as replacement parts. That's all what we're seeing here now with the new A series of 3D printers as well. We're seeing some really nice quality prints, uh, the continual updates to these machines. While I've had the A1 on hand, I've received a number of updates already to the firmware of this making minor improvements. I can only assume to the machine. I don't exactly know what it's uh, what it's updating. But again, one of the big standout features that Bamboo Lab has been known for is trying to make it easier for people to work with the multi color systems here. So we've got the AMS light, which we initially saw on the A1 mini that is now bundled as part of the A1 combo. Now, I don't know at launch here if they're gonna be selling the standard printer solo and then being able to purchase a, the AMS light separately at another time, or if it's only gonna be the combination. I'm recording this in advance here, uh, so I don't entirely know. But I believe up until just recently, you have not been able to order the A1 Mini without purchasing this plus the combination of the AMS light system there. That's good. I mean, it's great for anybody that's interested in the multicolor thing. It just overly complicates things for anyone brand new to 3D printing or just wanting a better overall printing experience. Adding in a multicolor system just sort of complicates things in my opinion. It's gonna be the same approach here with the A1 is what I'm thinking. So, but the good news is even if you got either the A1 mini combo or the A1 combo, like here, on the mini, I've stopped using the AMS and light entirely because I just don't do a whole lot of multicolor printing. So I just have this spool, the single spool style off the side. The same thing can go with the A1 where you not, you're not forced to use the multicolor system here. There is on the top here, a detachable arm here so that you can install and run spools of filament from the top and feed it in and not have to worry about the whole AMS light system at all. Also, by the way, if you are gonna be working with the AMS light, I definitely recommend not including this on your printer as it's printing because this little nub here rattles like crazy. The A1's also sporting a larger touch screen than the A1 Mini and this thing is so much better. That was probably one of my biggest gripes with the A1 Mini is just the, uh, the smaller touch screen and how finicky it can be with your finger fingertips and trying to hit the right thing. This is the perfect size. Now, this leads me to another point, which makes me think, if we're seeing this on the A series, can we please start seeing this nice touchscreen interface as an option to be mounted onto the P1P or the P1S? That is still to this day, the biggest struggle that I have with those machines is just the standard interface on those is not great. But this, this is really good. 
The printer is also going to be connected to your network where you can wirelessly send files directly to the machine, access it via the handy app as well. Also, one thing that might be just kind of specific to me and my process of how I do things here, but maybe there's some of you out there as well. Uh, but I typically will bring machines like this one here from this building back to my house and from my house back here, depending on what I'm doing. I like to bring them back and forth. Uh, it doesn't save the networks. However, when I go to re-enter the network, I don't have to re sync the machine to my Bamboo Handy account. Like all the other Bamboo Lab 3D printers, the A1 Mini and the A1 allow you to just enter in the Wi-Fi password again and it connects and you're able to go start printing again. You don't have to go through this whole syncing process like we do on some of the other Bamboo Lab printers. The A1's also packed with a ton of calibration options, which you can just run from an initial menu where you're gonna have your bed leveling, the flow rate compensation, as well as noise canceling. So it's gonna help trying to run some vibration compensation tests here to offset some of the noise that comes from the 3D printer while it's running in the space that you've got it set up in. And this machine is surprisingly pretty quiet when it's up and running, even at full speed. It does still rattle a little bit is what I'm hearing from, I'm not quite entirely sure what it is that's rattling, but I do hear a little bit of a rattle noise while it's printing. One of the awesome features that's on the A1 here that we also saw on the A1 Mini is how you can easily swap out the hot ends. And in fact, you can even use the same hot ends that you have on the A1 Mini directly on the A1, which was perfect for me because I just ordered a whole bunch of different spare nozzle hot ends there prior to this A1 release, even them contacting me about it. So now I have a bunch of spare nozzles that I can use on this if I need to. It's also got an onboard camera so that you can monitor your prints remotely or even take some time lapses. I wouldn't count on it taking some really good time lapses for you, but being able to get into the Handy app and check on the status of a print works fairly well. And I actually think this is a better camera and the connectivity wise than what I'm seeing over on the P1S. Now, one of the other big things that you need to be aware of when working with the A1 is that it poops off to the side. The Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, the P1P and the P1S poop in the back. So you need some kind of a bucket for those. The same thing goes here for the A1 and the A1 Mini. You definitely need some kind of a poop bin. And this is one that I've designed that I'll talk about here in just a few minutes. And when it comes to printing, you can just use Bamboo Studio, which is Bamboo Lab Slicer that works extremely well. And there's a ton of profiles built out to support the files that you're working with and the different materials. And so far, those have all worked really well based on the things that I've been printing with. And if you check out some of the other creators, they probably have the AMS mounted on the top of their printer. And I haven't got around to doing that yet. I printed the parts that they supplied to me to be able to do this. Unfortunately, one of them failed, so I need to reprint that. And uh, don't throw away the screws that <laughs> the printer came with that you, you take out as part of the unboxing and setup process. You're gonna reuse those if you wanna top mount this, and that might be the preferred method that I'm gonna use moving forward, because this, it's the AMS light system here, one of, uh, one of my issues with this is just how difficult it can be to feed in filament from the underside in here and getting it into the slot correctly and not having it pass through the hole openings inside of the AMS lights, as well as it's just kind of awkward to be able to get in here and maneuver this around so that I can get the spools on and off properly. I might as well talk about some of the other things that's uh, nagging me about this machine. It's not all perfect, but uh, this right here <laughs> slightly drives me crazy and I don't know like, I might just try to do something where it's like, it's secured up top here, where it's not dangling down. I haven't run into any issues where it's knocked over print. I, I'm, I don't think that's gonna be an issue. It's just visually, I don't like how this cables keep flopping forward on me. So I might just try and find a way that I can secure this up top if I'm intending on planning on leaving the AMS system here to the side. Another minor one, but one that I wanna call out that I have continually struggled with is just getting the build plate back on and aligned correctly here where it's not drastically dangling over one side versus the other. There is a little bit of an alignment tool at the very back here to help guide it in, but that still doesn't quite help me where I feel like 
it's still offset slightly from one side to the other. And a larger issue that I was having initially that's kind of just disappeared, and I'm not quite sure if it was firmware updates to the machine or what, but I'm no longer seeing it, is for the first handful of prints that I was running, I was seeing these seam lines or seams or layer shifts, or I'm not quite sure what it was towards the bottom of the prints, and it was occurring in almost every single print that I was running with the machine. Now let's take a look at the most important things, the prints off of this machine. The first thing I ran was this 19 minute Benchy. Yeah, it's a Benchy, it's a fast Benchy and it looks pretty good. I mean, it's just a Benchy. And similar to the A1 Mini, Bamboo Lab has also been sending out some of their color swatches. And so I printed a few of the color swatch holders that came pre-sliced on the printer. There's a handful of files that are there on the printer that come pre-sliced. This was a 55 minute print for one of them. And I mean, it printed and it looks really good. It's clean and it holds all of those color swatches so that I have them all neatly organized here in a little card deck. Now, if you watch my content, you know I love some cosplay stuff. So I wanted to print a full size helmet on this. Now, it is gonna be limited in build volume as to what you can print on this machine. So I tried to throw down a Magneto helmet and this printed in just under 20 hours at 0.2 layer height and looks so good. And of course it fits on my head. This is a 24 inch version that should fit a 24 inch head of this Magneto helmet from Yosh Studios. And the quality off of this just looks phenomenal. Now, unfortunately, the first attempt at this failed, the print started to separate from the supports while it was printing. So thankfully I caught that and then stopped the print and then re-sliced it and started it all over again. And it ended up working so much better the second time around. And in the completed version of that Magneto helmet, I don't see any of the banding issue that I was talking about there just a few minutes ago, but on the one that initially printed and failed, I do see those bands showing up in the print and we're gonna see more of those here. Then I found this multi-part Batman character helmet. This is the Talon and their helmet and it's available in three different parts from the Craftsman. And the first try, I printed the back at the wrong scale. It was the original default scale, which is way too small for my head. But what I wanted to call out with that is this is where if I'm looking back at that file, I can see some of that layer shifting occurring in that print. And then on the very front of the mask, I'm also seeing that towards the bottom. Everything else looks super clean on this, but unfortunately, I was seeing that banding appearing towards the bottom of this print. And it's always in that lower quadrant of whatever it is that I'm printing, but again, it has completely disappeared later on here. You can also see that layer shift in the top mounted brackets that I printed. These were the uh, 3MF files that were provided by Bamboo Lab. And unfortunately was seeing that there in those prints. And then when I went and reprinted some of the files, it didn't occur again. And check out this stunning potion bottle from Hollow Props. If you're not already, you need to be over on Hollow Props. Patreon just makes amazing support free models that this turned out so good. And unfortunately, again, I'm seeing that seam issue towards the bottom of the outer perimeter of the, uh, the, the jar there, but I'm not seeing it on the other files, but just on that other uh, uh, outer portion there. I then printed this wobble tower test there to see if I could pinpoint where that was occurring. And here you go. No seam lines whatsoever in this entire print. <laughs> Go figure that this would occur. And basically now after this, I haven't seen that ever since. So it's kind of whatever it was either corrected itself or maybe it was one of the many firmware updates that I got to the machine that has since corrected that. And while this might be a fantastic 3D printer, it still can produce print failure. So here was my first attempt at printing one of Nico Industries uh, Kunai files there, which just turned into a big spaghetti mess as the parts separated from the build plate. I then cleaned the build plate, added a few more supports and reprinted this and it turned out so nice, so clean. And again, no seam lines whatsoever on the print. And this file is so fun to fidget and play around with. And even though I might not be the biggest fan of multicolor printing, I still had to run a large multicolor print. And thankfully, James the printer created this ridiculously cool little Debbie cake case for your little Debbies or whatever it is that you wanna put in for the holiday season. And it printed spectacularly here on the A1 in multiple materials there, multiple colors. And of course it fits one whole box of those little 
pastry Christmas trees that remind me of my childhood. And as expected when running any multicolor print, it's gonna generate a whole lot of poop off to the side, which is where you need your own poop bucket. So I went into Shaper 3D and modeled my own poop bucket for the A1 and went through a few different iterations and ended up with this one here that I am so loving because it's got a little Death Star thermal exhaust port that your poop can shoot through to try and destroy the Empire. I also created a version that's completely plain as well if you're not into Star Wars or anything like that. But I'll be listing these and I have links to them down below if you want to go and print one for yourself. They'll be over in Maker World as well as printables free to download and uh, print for your A1 if you decide to pick up one of these for yourself. Yeah, and as you might see, I'm in my old recording space because I brought the printer home with me and I realized that my audio didn't record. So thankfully I had the printer and a few other prints. Let me give you my final thoughts on this machine as well as just a few other tidbits. I didn't mention anything about the unboxing. The unboxing and setup takes all of maybe 20 to 30 minutes. There is a little bit more of an assembly to this machine than we've seen with some of the other Bamboo Lab printers, but it's not really hard and the instructions were very clear. On the bottom of the A1, you'll find these squishy feet that we haven't seen on any of their other printers. And currently you can only hook up one AMS light unit to the A1 or the A1 Mini. However, on the back of the A1, there are three ports. That means potentially we could have up to 12 of these different rolls of filament leading into this machine eventually. I'm assuming they're gonna have to release some sort of a different head if they're ever gonna do that sort of thing. And I haven't talked about the pricing for the A1, specifically the A1 combo, which I know for sure is gonna be available today, starting at $559. So that's gonna get you the printer and the AMS light combination. That is a pretty incredible price for the build volume of the machine, the print quality and the speed. Overall, I've been extremely happy with what I've seen so far. Now, hopefully they end up selling each of these individually as well, because the standalone A1 is suggested to be priced at $399, which I think is incredibly competitive compared to the other bed slingers that are out there on the market currently. Now, obviously it's a better deal if you buy the combination of the two versus buying each of these individually. However, for someone just getting started with 3D printing, this might be the perfect starting point for you if you want to spend a little bit more money compared to some of the other 3D printers that are out there from folks like Creality, Elegoo, or Anycubic, which I think is gonna be the hardest impacted by the A1 3D printer. Again, this thing isn't perfect, but it is near perfect. And so far, I've just been getting nothing but really solid looking prints other than those few little line issues that have seemingly pun intended, gone away. Now in the upcoming weeks, I am planning on doing a larger review of the A1, comparing it to a bunch of the other bed slingers that are out there, like the Mark IV from Prusa, the Anchormake M5, which I have sitting over here in the corner still, as well as a bunch of the others that are very popular out there from Creality to Elegoo to Anycubic. Now everyone wants a larger build volume printer from Bamboo Lab, and I'm in the same market. However, what I think we might actually see from them next year isn't just a larger FDM 3D printer, I think we might see them do their first resin 3D printer, which could be very exciting. But I wanna take a moment to say thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making content here on the interwebs. If you're interested in things like my 3D printer settings, you can find those over in my Patreon. Now, obviously time will tell how this thing does. I've again, only had it for a handful of weeks. So I will definitely be coming back here in a month or so with a full on review of my experiences of working with this in more detail. But hey, thanks so much for watching. While if you're interested in picking up one of these for yourself, I'll have links to it down below. They're affiliate that help out the channel here. I also wanted to mention that Bamboo Lad did send this to me in advance. They're not paying me to make this video. It's not a sponsored video by them by any means. And again, if you're interested in picking up one for yourself, you'll find links to that down below. Hey, thanks so much for watching you all. I'll see you next time.